Hey guys, Alexander Williamson here with the secret history living inside of your aquarium. Today we're going to talk a little bit about endlers and guppies and evolution. Now, I want to talk about something that is mind-blowing. It's something that humans can't do. It's something that very few other creatures can do. Some fish can do it. Uh, Chinook salmon and Arctic char seem to be able to do it in a smaller capacity. But right now you're noticing a bunch of males. So these are all different males from different generations, six generations here of two different breeding projects. You can see some of them have orange spots. Some of them are leopard print from my rainbow tiger endlers. Uh, some of them are the blue Japanese and they have been crossed with the tiger endlers and they have orange spots or yellow uh, fins and then they've been crossed back with a wild type endler and they have the orange spot like that one does on its side so and the adult the the father of that one is that guy right there who already had the orange spot and so you can guess these are his babies in here so take a look at the fish while i chat with you guys because this is some mind-blowing uh research that is coming out of italy and it will impact the way if you breed guppies or endlers it will undoubtedly impact the way you select how you want to breed them so plus it's just fascinating so what we're going to be talking about today is cryptic female choice and part of this is going to explain why do endlers constantly or or guppies constantly express uh, mating behavior? Why are the males always showing off mating, even for other males? It's like nonstop. It's like they devote their life to doing the little mating dance. I assure you, by the time this film ends, uh, this video ends, you will see some mating dances going on here in the corner, even though they're begging for food. So food should be the top of their mind. So I'm going to get into why that happens. And then we're also going to talk about how these fish have adapted some incredible, incredible traits that you will not believe. Uh, yeah, I'm, maybe you will, but I didn't believe until I did some heavy research on them. So I'm, I'm going to start this story by saying some scientists put some endlers in a pond, and they've done this with guppies as well, but they put some endlers in a pond 20 years ago. And they checked on them later. These were American uh, American uh, evolutionary biologists. And they put them in the pond, and they thought that they'd have inbred guppies because they put two families, they put two pairs of males and two pairs of females, and both males were from way different lines, and both females were from way different lines. What happens 20 years later? Not a single fish is related even three steps apart like even second cousins or whatnot um and they were like what how is this possible how are these fish not inbreeding you'd think just by the law of averages they would interbreed so they then followed up on a study that came out recently that said Okay, if if an endler or a guppy, but specifically endlers, have an orange spot on them, like a lot of these guys swimming by do, that means that they are they are metabolizing carotenoids, which fall into the stream from various fruit trees and also from various insects. And it means that they are uber healthy in their local ecosystem. It means that they have all their vitamins and minerals. It may not mean that in captivity, but evolution has taught the, the females to see that and to choose them over everyone else. Their secondary choice is going to be choosing the most colorful, audacious, and energetic male that's out there, the most flamboyant male. But as you may recall from previous videos, the... Most energetic and flamboyant males are also the most likely to get eaten. So it's kind of like she wants to date the bad boy, uh, you know, who rides his motorcycle real fast and, uh, you know, probably will end up swerving off a cliff accidentally. So it's kind of playing these odds that 
All that needs to happen, though, is that that excited, strong uh, male sperm needs to get into an egg and reproduce. She doesn't need his help raising the baby, so it's not so much... Uh, it, it's all about stamina, health, energy, not having parasites, all that kind of stuff. It's not about long-term life goals or things that in the human world we'd think about. They just need to make it to reproductive age. And the males who are often more uh, subtle in their colorations and things, they have more spots. So like this guy, that endler back in there with the yellow tail and the orange coming up front, he's got spots. So even though they have the orange, pa the orange dot on their side, that orange dot comes with spots. And that means that they came from a high predator, uh, predator area because those spots help them uh, blend in with sand or rock at the bottom. There's one with spots right there. Um, so blending in with the bottom is helpful in them not getting eaten. So they live longer and have a chance to spread more of their uh, genes once all the flamboyant males get eaten early in the season. So... It's kind of two different approaches. Those are the two different approaches in the wild is either to be like live guns blazing, wearing a flamboyant glam rock outfits and, uh, you know, reproduce and then probably get eaten or be more subdued and just kind of wait until there are any many males left and sneak in there and uh, take advantage of the females who haven't uh, mated yet and see if they're interested in you especially if you've been eating really healthy food that whole time and avoiding death, which means that, yes, you are producing more of the species in the long run than the wild and crazy guys who are like these blue uh, liar tails that are just going crazy and uh, running all over, but they look like a fishing lure. Like, you couldn't design a fishing lure to be more attractive to fish than those tails. But the females will love that. Um, and if you give them an orange dot, I mean, that's just going to be like, oh, that's heaven. That is the James Dean, the Brad Pitt, the, uh, you know, whatever, Amber Rose, take your pick. That is the, uh, the talk of the walk, talk, walk of the talk of the walk, whatever. So in Italy, they did this study after those results came back from the American study about the pond having no interbreeding. So they wanted to find out what mechanism is allowing these fish in tiny ponds. Oftentimes they flood and they get stuck in creeks or gullies. And how do they not get interbred? It's bizarre. You can have sometimes as little as three fish start an entire new, here we go. Here's some mating going on an entire new colony now, this guy's expressing mating behavior, and there there might be one female in here, but I don't think there are females in here right now. So, why are they still doing their shimmy shimmy shake when it's all men with them? What is going on there? So, this study that just came out explains all of that and more. So, let's get right into it. In Italy, in Padova, Italy, uh, Clis... Clicilia Gasparani and Andrea Pilastrio are the two head scientists, evolutionary biologists, and uh, ecologists that have been studying in Venezuela and in Trinidad. They've been studying guppies and endlers, and they brought back a bunch of pairs of wild uh, guppies and endlers, and what they did is they artificially inseminated half of them. So that means they took the sperm from the males and they actually, they didn't give them the choice whether they were going to mate or not. They, they took that sperm and they put it in an egg and then they put it in the female and they thought, okay, do these females abort the eggs? And it turns out they don't abort the eggs. They, they birth them at the same rate whether they're related or not. And that was, for years, the guess in how they were deciding. But it turns out what they're actually doing is there's a chamber that they open and close around their uh, ovary. So their eggs come down out of their ovaries into their womb area. 
And when that wall opens to the womb and exposes the eggs, she has trapped the sperm, all the sperm packets. They come in these little packets that look like little dots in Endlers and Guppies and Swordtails, other live bears. They look like little dots, and the males use their gonopodium or long stick-like fin, and they tuck that up under the female. And sometimes she can downright flex and just get rid of it if she knows she doesn't want to deal with that guy right there. Um, Usually, the males have to prove that they have stamina and energy and health, so she's looking for color, dancing, or there's no other males around. They all got eaten because they were too flamboyant, and uh, she's looking for those old wise men that uh, have lasted the whole season. But the important thing is just that they reproduce, really, evolutionarily. So, what is going on, then, that allows the females to decide? And they can decide, they can make five or six times with different uh, males even if they don't want to, and in the animal world, in the human world, I mean, that's rape, that's wrong. Uh, in the fish world, that is just how they do business, unfortunately, is the males will come and kind of force themselves, and if they're stronger and faster and have a bigger stamina, then uh, they just tuck their packet right up there and run off. But the females get to keep it in a chamber, and obviously these aren't cognitive thinking males uh, in the way that you and I are. Uh, and so they're not like thinking, oh, she's just going to dump that. I think they they assume that their job is done. See, there you got more uh, mating dances going on between males. But what's going on other than that is the males are proving to other males that I'm the the the, the top dog. I am the alpha male. I can dance the longest. I have the most energy. I have the best access to food. And I will demand the best access to multiple females. And they try to establish a pecking order that way so there's less fin nipping. Um, sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. Uh, the orange spots usually throw everything off. So if you have a population with orange spots and they're all equal, everyone's got an orange spot, then the females go for more crazy colors, flamboyantness, uh, sword tails, things like that. Whereas females go for, if there's no orange spot, they just go for the most colors present, including ones we can't see that are in the more like ultraviolet array of where they see. So the sperm is now in the loading dock of the female, and she in her ovarian fluid is what they're calling it, is able to fill that chamber with her fluid, and it has a genetic marker called OF. It's labeled OF for science reasons that I'm not going to get into. Uh, So the OF marker. And the OF marker basically looks at those sperm and remembers which ones came in first and marks them as they're coming in. So each sperm packet gets a tag, and uh, chemically, her body is remembering, oh yeah, that guy I mated with first, he got this tag, and I didn't like him that much, so I'm going to attach the OF marker, and it's going to be 15 molecules heavy, and it's going to wrap around the tail of his sperm and drag it down so he has a much lower chance of his sperm swimming to the eggs and getting through the the wall of the egg, uh, many eggs that she has. Now, if she really likes a subject, she won't attach any of those OF markers to the sperm's tails, and they will rush ahead with the most, as we call it, motility, and make it into her uh, uterus or womb, and and then the eggs will get fertilized, and they grow inside of her, she gives live birth. Um, But that's fascinating that she remembers chemically how much she wants to rank each male. And so if, if he has an orange spot, but he's acting a little too crazy, maybe he gets a middle of the stack. Uh, he's beautiful, but he's going to get her babies killed within, you know, a month or two of them getting their color. 
So maybe she wants some some of that with a little bit of orange, like a little bit of the best of everything. And so that is the one she will mark the least. Now, the other crazy thing is she can flush that ovarian system with an OF repellent uh, oil type thing. It's a secretion. And it can push out certain sperms if she's decided she doesn't want it. Now, why is that important? This is the mind-blowing part. The reason that is important is because she will watch those males. She will remember those males. And even though she has the ability to smell who's her brother and sister and through pheromones and things like that and visual sight recall, um, so she, she can kind of try to avoid... Uh, being impregnated by uh, first family members that way, uh, but sometimes they're more forceful. So this gives her recall to get rid of them, which is awesome and also good for the entire species, whether the males know it or not. They're just kind of bullheaded going in and doing that. But this whole system actually makes the males have to prove themselves the entire spawning season. So if they look like a fishing lure and they get eaten halfway through the competition of her fertilizing those eggs, holding onto that sperm for a week or a month or however long it is, depending on how dire the environmental conditions are, then she'll get rid of his sperm. She'll say, well, it didn't work for him. He got dead. So she'll then have five types of sperm. And then she'll look at who is dancing the longest. Well, it turns out he had an orange spot, but his access to the carotenoids was, uh, you know, just luck of the draw. That spot kind of came up for a little bit, and now it's gone. So she can flush those out. So she has this ability to handle his sperm for up to three pregnancies out, and the females can actually keep in suspended animation, basically in their little wine cellar, of their, uh, let's just call it a uh, an egg pouch or a room ahead of the, a, a wine cellar ahead of the egg cellar. <laughs> so she's able to keep the sperm packets there and basically chemically tag them with more and more weight and then say, okay, guys, go, or kick them out of that room altogether. And so that way, the ones with the least amount of weight are almost guaranteed to get the maximum amount of eggs uh, impregnated. And sometimes she can have multiple different males impregnate her eggs different ways, and she'll have a split clutch. But usually she will decide on who is the best. So I just think that's awesome, and it also keeps the males from beating up on the females, from just ditching out. It keeps them living longer and it's not just as i said at the beginning of the episode it's not just about them breeding and getting to the age of conception it is a natural or evolutionary control for their uh showy flashy ways so that the nerdy uh reserved guppy gets to basically have a shot just as much as the flamboyant Endler or Guppy. So, very cool, very interesting new information. And it, there's uh, a bunch of information on there uh, in the article out of Padova, Italy. It's called uh, uh, Sexual Selection and Cryptic Female Choice. That's what this is called in animals when the female gets to decide what to do with the sperm after the fact. is cryptic female choice. So, I just wanted to share that story and new study with you guys, and I find it incredible and amazing and awesome. So if you like this kind of content, if you think this is interesting, you want to learn more about it, uh, please like, subscribe if you want to see more, and if you want to support the channel, support these little projects where I've been uh, trying out the orange spot theory for myself with this tank here. Drop a female in, see who she gets impregnated by in two days, and then check in a little tub later. Uh, then uh, support me on Patreon, uh, and that's a good way. That's the, that's the only financial support the channel gets right now. So, uh, all right, guys, I will talk to you later. I hope you have a great day. Hope you're doing well and taking care of your fish. 
and uh, I'll talk to you next time. Take care. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.